Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In August 2023, archaeologists and volunteers excavating on the Isle of Arran uncovered what is almost certainly the only complete Neolithic Cursus monument found on the island. And this monument is not a small ancient feature in the landscape. It's 1.1 kilometres in length, a vast rectangular enclosure dating back to between 3000 and 4000 BC. It's absolutely enormous. It sits close to the stone circles of Macri Moor, and so what we have is in fact a Neolithic complex. In fact, it was the Cursus Monument that came first, and the stone circles came after, which is also what we see in the Stonehenge landscape. Before the large sarsen stones were erected at Stonehenge, the Greater Cursus Monument just to the north was already more than a thousand years old indicating that these were important ancient features of the landscape, even when stone circles were being created. I believe that this is a very important point to remember, and I'll explain why shortly. Cursus monuments are found across Britain, and they come in all shapes and sizes, ranging from 200 metres to 10 kilometres in length, and they're bordered by ditches and banks, and sometimes large oak posts, which may have held up some kind of fence-like structure. They are some of the earliest man-made features noted in the British Isles, built at the onset of Neolithization, but the truth is, experts still don't really know their purpose, with the general consensus believing they could be processional walkways, places for ceremony and gatherings, sacred strips of land where the community converged. And whilst this could be correct, I think that this could be a later use and not the original. According to Kenny Brophy, a senior lecturer in archaeology at Glasgow University and also a cursor specialist, the monument is strategically located to take people from the coast up to the interior of the island and to showcase Macri Moor. But here I will just add that it wouldn't have been built to showcase Macri Moor because it's believed the stone monuments came later in the Neolithic, all the way through to the Bronze Age. As Brophy said when talking to the press, building the Aran Cursus would involve a crazy amount of labour, and so far, archaeologists have only excavated 1% of this ancient monument, a monument that would have been dug using bone, antler and stone tools. He believes this cursus was constructed over several decades, either by a small local group or by teams of visiting workers as part of a pilgrimage, saying there must have been a phenomenal social glue that bound people to realise what was likely the vision of a religious or political leader. I'll come to my thoughts on this and cursus monuments in general shortly. The Aran cursus is unusually well preserved and that's because of its positioning, an upland location away from intensive farming areas, and also because of the presence of a peat bog. It was first discovered by a LiDAR survey, a technology which over the past decade has greatly helped us to discover lost ancient structures around the world. But what are Cursus monuments? Are they really just ceremonial walkways? I personally don't think that is their original purpose, and I've been working on a hypothesis for a number of years, even before I started the Ancient Architects channel. Curtis monuments were constructed very early on in Neolithic Britain, at the very onset of agriculture, and after spending considerable time researching and viewing Curtis monuments, I noted how all of them are associated with water whether having a river or stream running through them, or the source of a spring inside them or close by. And what do we see at the Aran Cursus Monument? It was no surprise to see a stream or river running through it, and it also looks like there are three henge monuments located close to the intersection point between the body of water and the Cursus. I can actually see more than 10 henge monuments scattered around the Cursus. And to me, this relationship is important, 
and we see this at just about every single Cursus monument in the UK, including the Stonehenge Greater Cursus. We always find a Cursus with one or more henges close by, with a body of water running through the area. Far from being purely ceremonial structures, I think their original purpose was functional in an agricultural setting, with water from the stream or river being directed into the man-made ditches at the long rectangular monument, which acted like ancient irrigation canals, providing water to a wider area of ancient farmland, to help the farmers water their fields, and also for animals and humans to drink. I also have the idea that far from being processional walkways, domesticated farm animals may be kept inside the monuments, may be drawn to the area by water and herded inside, and there they were kept and may be bred. Another option is they could be used for flood defence, again useful in a Neolithic setting. I also believe the associated henge monuments were built to contain water again for agricultural purposes. A stone circle inside a henge monument is usually a later addition, and I think the stones are in fact a distraction when trying to understand their original function. Cursus and henge monuments are often found in close proximity, and I think they are evidence of humans engineering the land, but not for ceremonial reasons, but for agricultural benefit in the early Neolithic. They may have become ceremonial in later history, later in the Neolithic and early in the Bronze Age, when they were rediscovered by new people, redefined and reused, so I'm not saying that archaeologists are wrong. I just think that's half the story, their later history. But their origins? Well, in my opinion, the relationship between Cursus and Henge monuments with water should be our primary focus. I do believe our early Neolithic ancestors were engineering the land to ensure a fruitful agricultural society and a way to guarantee their longevity. The people that dug this structure were the people that lived off the land and what we're looking at, this 1.1 kilometer Neolithic structure was maybe what allowed them to succeed. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.